horrible nature thing just happened. Try and he's, I don't know if, you, I don't want to poke around too much, so you may not get to see it. Where'd you go? Where'd it go? I either just saw an adorable baby bunny go hopping from right there to over there, or maybe a rat. I'm not sure. Wait, well, where'd you go? I see you. I see you. I'm going to stay far back. Where'd it go? Is this, look at the little baby. You seem too small to be away from your mama. Right? That's too small. I can't help you though. Baby bunnies, they're notorious. They're so hard to rehab. Stay away from the pool. Don't go near the water. So stinking cute. Is that too small? I don't know. It's got all of its fur. It's hopping around okay. You look like you're big enough to eat some stuff on your own. You should be off the milk by now. Okay. Stand back. Leave it alone. That was fun. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just, you know, doing the thing. Hanging out outside. It's a beautiful evening. This isn't, I wasn't supposed to start the video till tomorrow. But then, you know, the, I saw a cute baby animal. Couldn't resist. Had to let y'all see it. Where'd you go? It's still back there. Should know. Do not get attached to baby rabbits. That never goes well. I don't, like I said, I wasn't planning on starting the video right now. It's like 6.30 at night. I came outside and the entire garden was just bleh, completely wilted down, just shriveled. Everything over here just completely shriveled up. It was only like 92 today. The sun was intense, so that can make a big difference. Have things going over here, watering with the this thing right here because clearly the in-ground irrigation isn't cutting it. Now it's down here on this end with the sprinklers on, not this one, the actual in-ground irrigation, I noticed that I couldn't, I didn't, I, I couldn't find the sprinkler heads. Particularly over here, I was like, um, where's the sprinklers? Th things are still shriveled up over here. I lightly hand watered and as I stand up the hose, I went, no, no, this is gonna take too long. I gotta get the sprinkler out, the tripod one. Yeah, the head that's right here, you see that, just that little nub? That's not big enough. And I remembered that in the spring, I was supposed to dig that up and do something different right here. What that is, is it is a riser. It's one of these things. This end, nope, not that end. This end goes into the ground and they're extendable. So you turn this nut right here and you can adjust the height on it. I think it goes to 24 inches. The one that's down there is busted. So that's as high as it goes. And I need to put this one in here which will be much, much taller. I never did it. I bought the thing, but I never did it. So that's on me. The reason that needs to be done though, is you can see that right here. Well, that's not gonna water much except for everything right here, right? That's not tall enough. And even actually, I don't think this is going to be tall. Well, eh, maybe. So it's gonna be down the ground a few more inches than that. And then what I've done in the past is put a rock in front of it to lean it back and then that gives it the right angle. That might be, and that's what I'm gonna be working on tomorrow or at some point, probably within a few minutes from this part of the video. Right now, I'm more focused on getting everything rehydrated using this sprinkler right here, the tripod sprinkler, which is actually nifty because I can hook that one up to the Shapen fertilizer dispenser thingy, this thing right here, so that things can get fertilized without having to do it by hand. That's really nice. I also realized today that uh, something I've complained about for a long time is that this hose right here, just the water pressure is terrible, whereas the red one is amazing. It's a one inch hose versus a three quarter inch hose. That's the main reasoning for that. And uh, while I was out here fertilizing, watering this morning, I was just so bored because it takes so long when you're working with just a trickle of water standing around these big pots. And I went, hey, wait, what would happen if I were to hook the one inch hose to this instead of running this from the house? And that made a tremendous difference. So part of the problem is just the pressure coming in from the house over here is just garbage. So that's good to know. It's still not amazing pressure coming out of the orange hose, but it's a huge improvement. Uh, yeah, there's the impromptu four, five minute intro to the video of me saying, I don't know what's going on this week, other than need to water plants, change out a sprinkler head. Haven't thought that far ahead because last week's video just came out. I haven't even replied to comments yet. Well, not most of them. What was I looking for over here? Oh, yeah, I need to get the thing. This is, everything's in the way. Too many things going on over here. You know, when the pool flooded, I ended up moving all the pool cleaning equipment to the backyard from the driveway because it's being used so frequently. Now I have to remember that I need to put that back. Oh, this might, I don't think this is good anymore. 
But what this is, is a animal raft. So you put that in there for critters that fall in the pool. It gives them something to climb onto and hopefully be able to jump or claw their way up that ramp to get out of the pool. I guess this still works, it's just I would worry that something might get stuck inside the hole in there. So I'm gonna order a new one of those. That does help a lot. It's usually just moles or voles, shrews, I don't know, the pointy-faced fuzzy ones that I find in the pool. Sometimes, occasionally a ground squirrel. Uh, I just know if I didn't put this here and then found a dead baby bunny in here tomorrow morning, I would be very upset with myself. That's not okay. If you know better, you gotta do better. Not that that's going to necessarily work or save his life, but it might help. I'm even wondering if I should probably... I might raise the water level up in the pool tonight, too, so that there's a higher likelihood of being able to get from the bottom to the top step and get out. I need to put water in here anyways. It's been so hot and dry. Dry as it hasn't rained. It's plenty humid. So the water's been evaporating. Nobody cares about any of this. I'm so sorry. I got these at Michael's. And it... All I had to say about it, they're cute. They look like solo cups. They're wine buckets. I actually, I got these when I picked up that rug, which was the vlog where my sister had the baby. And, uh, well, there was, I didn't, my sister having a baby wasn't in the vlog. That'd be really weird. I was doing yard work at their house and, like, set some stuff up. And I went to Michael's in between to get something. I don't remember what. Or no, I went to Party City, which was next door to Michael's, to get stuff to put in their front yard. And, like, congratulations, baby things, and whatnot. I walked next door to Michael's, got the rug, and then said in that video, and I'll show you what I got when I got home. And then I never did. So here's the, that's it. Just a couple buckets. This looks yellow on camera. It's kind of lime green in person. Actually, I, no, actually, I think this just comes standing underneath the umbrella. It's fairly yellow. I'm not the person to talk to about shades of color because I don't see them very well. But I thought these might make fun planters. I, well, really the reason I got them was because my niece and nephew were coming in town and I thought it would be good for them to have containers for them to dump their junk in while they're at the house so that it's not, you know, scattered all over the place. And then I completely forgot about it. There's just so much going on that week with, you know, a baby being born and then family coming in town and all the other stuff. So that never happened. But now I can, I could use them as an ice bucket, but I have a couple really nice ice buckets that are actually insulated. So I don't see myself ever using these for wine or champagne or whatever that is, Seagram's, whatever they have in there. Uh, I think cutting some holes in these and turning them into pots might be kind of cute. We'll see. I don't, that's not like on the agenda right now, but something I might do. I also need to remember tomorrow morning that I need to stretch this line out so I can get working on the drip. I don't think it's going to be a start to finish thing, but it would be good to at least get that ball in motion. It's one of those things where uh, you don't necessarily know what you need until you're already doing it. You know the basis of what you need, but when it comes to various connectors and plugs and things like that, I always end up needing things that I hadn't thought about. That may not happen this time. I know that I, um, I got all my hoses and everything over here in various connectors to connect the hoses and some valves, but what I didn't get <laughs> were drip emitters. I didn't, I didn't get any drip emitters. All I have right now is hoses. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. The problem is... I want to use, I'm going to try and find some around here. I don't know if I have any, but the drip emitter spikes. They're called micro sprayers. Yeah, I don't know because I, I pulled up all the drip this winter, early spring, so I don't see any out here. Well, it's a spike with a spray head on it that will water a large area as opposed to just a drip head, which is something you put in directly above the soil so the water gets down there right to the roots. The micro sprayers, I used to just get them at Lowe's and Home Depot, but Lowe's completely shifted their store arrangement, the planogram, I suppose is what you call it last year, and now their selection of drip supplies is just horrible. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but like as far as Lowe's goes, I haven't really bought much of anything from them, except for like I'll stop and get some cleaning supplies, maybe some potting soil, but as far as plants and a lot of other stuff is concerned... They just haven't had anything for me in the last couple of years. So I have to uh, get online and try and find out what the brand was that I was using. Because there was a brand that I really liked. I've tried several. Most of them I did not like. 
So I'm gonna hunt around, try and find those and see if I can get them delivered sometime this week or maybe find a store around here that has them. Ace, my, no, I don't think Ace does. I've been to Ace plenty. I've never seen those at that store before. If I can find those, then I could actually get the drip set up from down here by the Alexander Palm all the way up to right around here. Ultimately, I wanna take it all the way down the back of this wall, but you know, there's no reason to be shooting for the stars right now. I gotta keep it realistic because of time and parts and everything, but maybe that'll happen. Maybe I'll be able to get that all the way down. Do you see what I see? See that? See that brown, brown crown shaft? Oh, this is gonna be so satisfying. Okay, that probably, it still has green at the base that could have waited another day, but look at that. Yes. Love that. Got a new ring on the trunk. Okay, see, so that little bit of green right there, that's how you know it's not time to pull it yet. But I really want, I think I'm gonna do it anyways. Depends, if it just comes right, yeah. I mean, it's, the main thing is that you don't have to put any effort into it, which I really didn't. They should snap off on their own, but, ah, uh, satisfying. I always get excited. Anytime you get a new ring on the trunk, that's so much fun. What was I talking about? I got distracted very quickly and very easily. Oh, the drip. Yeah, we'll work on sprinkler stuff this week. And the drip and hopefully get some stuff planted up or repotted. I'd like to... Uh, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I have a few things I need to get repotted. That was a cute little hummingbird. This morning, watering. Been doing a lot of watering. That's all I'm doing. So much water. Toby's having himself a good time. He put himself up there. Well, he put himself maybe three quarters of the way up there, and then I had to give him a little bit of help. I walked around. I was over there watering, turned around, and he was like just barely his butt. Little tip of his butt was hanging off of there. I'm pretty impressed you got up there almost all the way all by yourself, Toby. Such a strong old man, yes, you were. That's my Toby. Okay. Uh, a sprinkler. That's what I'm supposed to be working on, right? I think that's where I left off. Is I need to put on a new sprinkler head? Um, excuse me, Buckethead. What are you doing? I didn't give that to you. Turbo. Alright, he's having a good time at least. Turbo, what are you doing with that? What are you doing with that? I didn't tell you you could have that. That's not for you. It's not for you. Thank you. Thanks for bringing it back. You want a toy? I'll get a toy. We'll call this a trade-up. Come on over here. Come on over here. Look at that. That's a new toy. That's a new toy. Here you go. Go get it. It's in the pool. You can go. You can swim. There we go. Okay, a happy Labrador. Two happy Labradors. I almost said, hey, what's up, garden and friends? It's been a day. That was really cute. I was tempted to let him keep playing with this thing, but, you know, it would just get torn to pieces. Not that that would be the end of the world. It's a giant plastic solo cup. Okay, so the sprinkler head. I guess I may as well just go down there and do that. Do you want to go swimming, Toby? Maybe I'm going to take a break and take Toby swimming. He doesn't ever want to go swimming, and he's in his gray days, so if he wants to get in there, then I'll help him get Okay, all right. Okay, not that graceful, but you got it done. What's it planning on getting in the pool? Do I have anything in my pot? No, we're good. Okay, come on, Tobes. <laughs> Pull my shirt up. I didn't take it off. Come on, baby. Come on. You want to go swim? Yeah, I don't know what to do with you. Is that better? You just want to hang out in the steps and cool off in the shallow end? I'm okay with that, Toby. You can stay there. Okay, I was gonna go put in a sprinkler head, but apparently I'm just I'm gonna sit here for a few minutes now while the dog does, I, I enjoys his pool time. Come on, Tobes. You don't want to come out? This is weird. He's been very, like I said, senile-ish the last few days. Oh, okay, Turbo. Should have seen that coming right next to me. I should have known he was going to do that. Yeah, I'd, I don't know. You know, if you've had old dogs and you know how it goes where they just have good days and bad days and he's had interesting <laughs> days. That's the only way I know how to describe it. He's happy and chipper. I take out a toy and try and play with him, or really, he doesn't really play with toys that often, but if I allow him to chase me, then he chases me, a very slow trot. 
But he has fun with it. He's getting up and down the stairs. There's some bowel control issues, but they aren't that bad. He's only gone in the house like twice, which is fantastic considering this one right here, this little butthead, Turbo's peed in the house four times in the last three days. What's that about? They're both being kind of weird when I think about it from that regard. Okay, hi, beach ball. Four times in the house for Turbo. That's more than he's peed in the house in the last two and a half years. So I don't know what that's about. He's been drinking a ton of water. He's been swimming a bunch, but he hasn't been swimming more than usual. So I I don't know. Now, I think I'm going to call the vet tomorrow. Take Toby in. He's an old man. I like to take him in every few months just to be safe. And as far as Turbo and the peeing goes, I'm just going to chuck that up to... Uh, too much pool time and uh, needing to reinforce going to the grass habits. I used to have to do that with Tucker, my dog that passed away in 2020. During the summertime, he would start to have accidents in the house because he'd spend so much time playing outside that he would forget that while he's out here, he needs to go to the bathroom. I don't know. Why are we doing? We're supposed to be putting on a sprinkler head. It's so hot over there. <laughs> this is convenient procrastination. And to Oh no, poor Toby. <laughs> Sorry, Tobes. Too many balls. Too many balls. You look so cute over there, Toby. You're such a good boy. Yes, you are, Tobes. Such a sweet old Toby. Yes, you are such a sweet old man. Oh, are you going to go home for a swim? That's pretty good. Did a nice circle. And going back to the steps, that's all he ever does. He comes out, he swims a circle, he goes back to the steps, and he's like, all right, that was enough for me. I think I'm going to need to help him get out, though. Oh, I tried to get him out, and he said, nope, I'm not ready yet, so that's fine. I guess I'll just float here for a few more minutes. I don't know why. I'm in the inner tube, as if that offers any kind of protection from the camera getting wet, which wouldn't even matter. I'm using my phone because it's too hot outside for the nice camera, and the phone can get wet. Here's a different look at the planters by the dolphins. Here's a different kind of look at the planters by the dolphin. We usually get to see them from the front. That's, and there's not much to see. The sun impatience are starting to do something. It's taking their sweet time, but better late than never. That's what the planters look like from in here. It's kind of nice, sort of a nice view. I am wishing I had put a trailer over the front. I wanted to put the lipstick plants over the front, but I just I never saw them anywhere for sale, which is weird because I used to see them all the time. And uh, I think I did see them a couple times in a hanging basket, but I didn't want to spend $30 on a hanging basket to tear it apart. Wouldn't that have been pretty? The red wispies lipstick things hanging over the front. I think that would have looked nice. There we go. That's what the diving board looks like from inside the pool. <laughs> I've just lost control of everything. There we go. The hydrangea planters. I don't know why. Why am I even in here? I don't need to be inside the inner tube. It's just making everything more difficult. Yeah, it's a nice angle. Nice view of things from in here. I know it's probably too loud. I bet y'all can't hear anything I'm saying. And I think Toby is probably ready to get out by now. You ready, Tobes? Ready to go inside? Or get out and dry off? Did you miss me? I missed you, Toby. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Oh, that's nice. That's nice, isn't it, Tobes? Well, shoot. That's not going to be high enough. That's just going to blast the water right into the impatience. Even if I were to angle it back, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to do it. I have to angle it like way, way, way back. Huh. If I have another one of these connectors, then I think I have an extension pipe, maybe, in the garage. Cut myself off right in the middle of that sentence there. I'm not positive if I have the parts or not, but if I do, I'll be able to raise it up like another eight inches. Overall, it's going to look pretty ridiculous, but it would probably get the job done. Hey, Tobes. Hey, don't be All right. Never mind. Don't have the parts. guess it was worth checking. If I had, then that'd be a good time saver. This head isn't that hard to change out. It's just a matter of unscrewing a couple things and putting a few things back together. Yeah. That's... Doing what it's supposed to do. You need to adjust the angle on it. I think that's actually getting back there fairly well. You see that? It's hitting the bananas and everything. I did angle it back. I used a rock. That should do the trick. Just need to open it up so it goes more wide. So it goes down there as well as over here. I think to do that, I have to do this with it, though. 
like that. Okay, I think that's good. Getting everything over here from what I can tell. Yeah? Uh-huh. Okay, what about down here? We getting it all the way over here? So the heads are overlapping? They are. Okay, there's still a dead zone right here, and I'm not sure what to do about that. Move this. This is just blocking things. Yeah, see this spot right here? Right there? That's not getting much water. Is it these leaves? If I pull these up, things get more wet over here? Eh, kind of. Might be more that leaf right there. Okay, yeah, alright. I think I need to cut a few leaves off of the bananas. Otherwise, that's good. It was nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. Kind of a blessing in disguise that I got in the pool with Toby because it's really sunny over there and it's very warm out. So now that I'm, well, was wet, now damp. That made that a lot better. I totally forgot this morning to stretch out the hose for the drip. So I can't work on that. With this hose over here, the half inch drip line, it doesn't really matter the diameter of the drip line. But when you buy hose in these coils, it's best to roll them out in the sun, stretch them out into a straight line, because they're very difficult to work with like this. And if you pull on them and they get a kink in them, that kink is there. It stays very set in place, so I guess I'll just wait until tomorrow. And that's fine, or whenever I can get around to it. Hey, you've heard the saying, careful what you wish for. This has been unrolled, uncoiled for about 12 hours now still really stiff it's not hot so it's a couple days later all i've done for the last few days is water and then refilm half of the video that came out wednesday camera overheated while i was filming that video and when it overheated it deleted what i had been filming apparently i went to upload everything so i could edit it on the computer and there's just a picture and no video so i don't know if that happens that set me back a day which isn't the end of the world it's an easy thing to redo but uh, it's uh, it's only like 72 degrees now <laughs> because I guess Debbie, I assume, is what's going on up here. Tropical storm. It's not a storm. It's, I don't think it's even a depression at this point, but the outer bands, it's really cloudy and cool. Nearly 30 degrees cooler than it's been, which is great. But like I said, compare what you wish for. It's not warm enough to loosen up these hoses. That's all right. We'll get there eventually at some point. I don't even have the sprinkler heads yet. What I do have stuff that finally came in the mail are my vinyl siding hooks which I need because in this box I have green panels which is just plastic plants to go on the wall it might look really bad I do not know I have no idea what these things even look like I haven't opened it up yet hopefully they look nice I don't know they were a very good price this blade I swear it's so dull I bought a bad pack of refill blades that, look at that, it's already rusty. I just changed this out like maybe a week ago. It's practically crunchy. Uh, I went cheap. I went with the cheapest ones I could find because I just, I don't know what this is going to be like. I feel like it could look really good or it might look really stupid because I'm only going to be doing this one spot right here. It's not going to go up any higher than that door and window framing right there. So, I don't know. It's plastic plants, so you just don't know what you're going to get. And uh, this was like $50, something like that, for the pack. Uh, 57 I think, which, if you've ever looked into these things, that is a very, very good deal. It doesn't smell as horrible and chemically as I assumed it was going to smell. Ugh, yeah, yes it does. Never mind, forget that I said that. This stuff stinks. Let's see here. That's not too bad for what it is. And they're going to be far back against the wall there. It might look okay. I did make sure to pick up ones that said UV resistant. Although they actually, they said sun resist. <laughs> There's a language barrier on the listing with these. Uh, I don't know. The sun gets pretty intense over here. So we'll just see what happens. I don't, it's kind of dark and jury out so I don't know if I feel like diving all the way into this but I'll get a couple of them hung up I'm gonna have to do some cutting for the rest and I should have enough here I think there's 12 pieces one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 
11, 12. Yeah, 12 pieces. They're 20 by 20. I measured this out, sketched it up, subtracted the square footage of the window from everything. Didn't take into account that I'd be cutting around these light fixtures, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. That's too much math. Wasn't going to do all that. I figure when I get to that point, I'll probably just be like slicing them and pulling them around the light. I don't know. I'm just going to toss a couple of them up on the wall for now and see what they look like. You can see some of the seams, but it did say online, not with this, these didn't, they didn't come with any instruction or anything of the sort, but it did say online that when you leave them out in the sun, they'll fluff up some more. So maybe that will take care of the seams. I'm not that bothered by them right now, but we'll give that some time and see if it starts to affect me. The mosquitoes are really bad. I would light the citronella torches, but I feel like as I'm reaching over here, that I would end up just getting burnt potentially by that citronella. I think I measured this out to go from this point and down. I don't know if that'll look stupid having it going across that part of the window frame or not. Uh, it's not like it ever open that window. There's a fish tank right on the other side of it. I don't know what that has to do with anything. I just never opened that window. And you can see in spots like this, I might need to come in with some double stick tape, maybe to help hold that up. Or maybe I can put another clip more down in here. The problem is this siding, it looks like you could put a clip in every single one of these, but you can't. See, every other one, it's actually a solid piece. So this is one piece of siding right here. You can put a clip into the groove right here or down here, but not right there. I had one right there. I don't really know much good that's going to do me over here. Nothing's going to happen right there. I could zip tie these two together. That's an option. I got a bit of a bulge there. <laughs> it's poking out right from that one spot. I zip tied the top and the bottom together and that helped snap it all back into place. But that one piece is still sticking out. I don't know from far away. It may not even be noticeable. Uh, yeah, you can't really tell. You can't even see the seams from far back. It does look like AstroTurf though. I don't really know what I was expecting. Of course, it's going to look like AstroTurf. It's plastic plants. That's, that's what I'm getting into here. That's something I'm going to have to accept. But I think that will look nicer or just fun compared to the gray siding over here. Maybe. I don't know. It's getting late. I shouldn't even have started this project right now. I'm going to have to cut some pieces and fill in gaps. That's going to take some time, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run. I'll probably pick this up in the morning, though, because the mosquitoes are really bad and it's getting dark. The camera makes it seem brighter than it is. It's actually, it's like... I don't know. It's 8 o'clock, so it does seem brighter on the camera. The camera's a liar. It's not this bright out. Okay, that's as far as this is going to go tonight because I don't really feel like staring into light bulbs while I'm doing this. It looks great, doesn't it? It looks fantastic. I figured need to fill in all the gaps that I can reach right now, and then tomorrow I'm going to have to move all this stuff out to get the parts over there. And like with this stuff that's flopping forward, I'm guessing this uh what double-sided tape maybe alien tape that could maybe work some of that i don't know how well it's going to hold up in the sun this is probably one of those things that's going to require some tinkering and i need i know i need to trim that off i actually think i also need to either bring it down or I don't know, i'll figure this out when i'm basically done with everything but the line is supposed to stop at the top of the window like I didn't want it going over the window because above the window is one of those pieces that you can't put a siding clip into. So I don't know how I would get a piece to go across that would actually stay in place. Like I said, I don't think this alien tape stuff is going to work all that well. And I don't want to put anything else on the siding that are damaging. <laughs> it's a good start. Definitely need some fine tuning and some improvements. You can see where things are all ruffled up and need to get them squished back together, but there's no point in doing that until I've secured them in place, right? Yeah, I'm going to like it so much more when I cut this off the window and get these pieces well, when I finish it. When I finish it, I'm going to like it a lot more, maybe. Right now, I'm kind of, for some reason, this is giving me Kentucky Derby vibes. He came out this morning, looked over here, and went, oh no, what the f***? <laughs> it looks so bad. But right in the middle of it, in the midst of a project, so I'm just going to let that go. The hose still hasn't uncoiled. So with these plasticky drip lines, I don't like to force it. Anytime I forced it, I end up with spots that get kinks in them. It's best that it gets warm enough that they just lay down 
on their own. That's how I know that the hose is going to be loose enough, soft enough for me to weave in and out and around things. I don't want to work with that yet, so I don't really, I don't know what to, what to do here. I have dipped my toes into too many projects. Uh, I don't, I don't know what's, what's going to happen for the rest of this video. Well, moving forward, I have drip parts here that I've been going through, trying to manage the inventory. These are valves, in case I need to regulate pressure along the lines, then I have just little valves that can be adjusted. I probably will have to do some pressure regulation, just because this is going to be a lot of line. So this way, instead of trying to determine where the most pressure is and shutting things off, I can do it by, like, probably once I get... I'll, I'll, here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Got ahead of myself. I'll probably put one valve on the berm over there, and then the rest of them will be, like, one here, one there, and maybe a couple more down this way, just so I can shut things on and off if I need to, because there are going to be areas that will need irrigation more than others. Like down here in this, the hill garden, those plants, they don't need irrigation anywhere near as much as the impatience and the laurels and the more tropical type plants over here. Over there is a lot more prairie style garden, so they can dry out more, but there might be occasions where I want to go over here to the wall and just flip that valve so that they get that extra water while other things are running while the water is running for the other plants. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, I'm still waking up. <laughs> Should know by now, don't pick up the camera until you've worked out and you're all woken up. These are the clamps you put on the ends to shut the hose down. These are... what are these? I don't, I don't remember. Oh, three-way splitters, 90-degree valves, and... Uh, oh no, these are, these are cool. These aren't the 90-degree valves. These are cool. So these go into the half inch line and they have a couple of ports on them that you can put your quarter inch lines. The quarter inch line is what you run to the actual drip head. So in spots up here on the hill where those Miami planters are, I can tap into the half inch line with these and just run a couple feet of tubing. <laughs> Come over the wall, that might look kind of dumb, but I actually don't think it'll be that noticeable and be able to put two drip heads on each one of those Miami planters with this. That is going to make it so that the water pressure stays much higher and more consistent than having to run a single line that's tapped in from several feet away back in the garden. I can just run the half inch right up behind it. And that should work well in theory. Also, I got a new punch tool. I always get excited to try new punch tools. I don't know how much I need this product, but I thought I would give it a try. The idea with this punch tool is that you apparently use this to attach the drip heads to the quarter inch drip line. So you can see in the picture up here, there's your drip line and then there's your drip emitter. So the emitter sits in here and the drip line goes in there and you push this and it'll connect them together. I was under the impression that you could actually use this to attach them to the half inch line, which is what I would prefer. That's what I need the most help with, because the issue I have with the half-inch drip line is that sometimes when I'm trying to get the emitter to punch into it, or the connector that connects the quarter-inch line to the half-inch line, it'll push down too hard, and then you get a sort of a kink, like an indentation around where that fitting goes, and then you have water that can trickle out of where that should be sealed. I don't, I think I misunderstood. There were multiples that all looked the same, this would still be nifty, because sometimes I have trouble getting the emitters inserted into the quarter-inch line. If you have arthritis, I bet this would be extremely useful to you. I, I don't know how I'll be able to give this a try in this video, because I don't think I'll be doing that kind of work, but it seems nifty. And uh, when I do give it a try, I'll make sure to talk about it some more. But I don't... If it doesn't punch into the half-inch line, then I don't know. I'm going to... I guess scan the QR code and watch the video and figure more stuff out with that. The other parts that I have in here are parts that I don't know what to do with. I don't, I don't understand what this is. So I ordered 12 of them. <laughs> the way Rainbird made it seem, this is a Rainbird part, you stake this into the ground, your half inch line goes in here, comes in right there also, or exits right there, and then it's threaded. And you're supposed to, from what the picture showed, be able to just screw in your micro-irrigation head up top. It would be fantastic 
if I could figure out how that works because I haven't found any micro heads that have a fitting that would screw into this. So if anybody knows, let me know. I'm trying some new things here and this is something that I have never ever tried before. To me, this just looks like a piece that you just screw a sprinkler head into, not a micro irrigation head, just a sprinkler head. But in the picture online, there was a micro irrigation head coming out of it. So I, I don't know. And the micro irrigation heads looks like they're not going to be here for a few days. So I just, just sitting here waiting on stuff to arrive so I can get this ball moving. Hopefully I'll at least be able to get the line run in this video. It would be a lot of fun to be able to try these things out because that would be so cool, but I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Also, how does the half inch line stay in there? You just push it in there and it just stays. It doesn't pop back out. This doesn't turn. Like usually these pieces right here, if you turn them, they'll screw down or tighten down on the line to hold them in place. They don't move. Like you just put it in there and just trust that it's never going to pop back out. I, I don't, I don't, I don't have faith in that. Making progress. Still not quite there since several hours. The sun finally came up. That's going to help. In the meantime, I've decided I just I need to get some things done. So I'm gonna cut this tree down real quick. It's messy, it drops stuff everywhere. I didn't plant it there. It's shading the barberry that's underneath it. It just it needs to go. It's the messiest tree I've ever been around in my life. It's not even something I planted. It hopped over from the neighbor's yard like six years ago. And they don't even know what it was, which means it was just a weed. I've looked into trying to identify it and it's always wilty and sad looking. So I think it's just best to go ahead and say goodbye to the weed tree, whatever it is. All right, let's get this ball rolling. I went ahead and I ran the majority of the line. We'll talk about that some more in a minute because some of it just still doesn't want to uh, relax and I've set things up to where hopefully I'll have like a three-way or two-way manifold situation here so this is my main line right here that's what goes into the sprinkler system underground I'm going to put this right here this is the hose that goes to the pool's top off and then this is going to be the line for the sprinkler system and then just have to get the pressure check and by pressure check I mean well you'll see so there it is. I'm not going to leave this on the patio. It'll probably be there for a while. I'm sure I'll forget to scooch it and dig it under, but you get what I'm saying. So this way, not losing pressure from the hose that goes through the pool. I'm not even going to keep that there. In fact, I'm going to try and swap that out at some point with a, one of those flex hoses that flattens down. I think that would look a lot better and I could keep it coiled up over there. Then when the pool needs water, I can just pull that out. But for now, this is fine. All right, and then over here, oh yeah, I, there was no follow up about that tree. It came down smoothly. Whatever it is, I'm very, I don't want to say allergic, but this thing makes me itch. So that was the other point that I forgot to make with it is that I don't like having it around because it makes my skin feel like it's on fire and then it itches for a day or two. So up until this point, I got this hose for a lot relax, but it's still kind of tight and coiled over here. So I'm going to try and uncoil this portion and get the water moving through it just to see if that's going to help maybe push it out and relax it some because the groundwater right now is extremely warm. Like it's so warm that when I put water in the fish tanks inside I'm having to fill up a 45 gallon barrel and let it just sit with an aerator in it to cool the water off because it's too hot to even put it in the fish tanks. So uh, that's the only thing I can think of to get this done because I'm tired of waiting. I mean I guess I could wait three or four more days for it to warm back up but it feels like the most opportune time to do something like this is when it's not stupid hot outside, right? Yeah, I would prefer to do this right now while things are cooler. Oh, yes, yeah, so you see what I'm saying? It's just, it's unruly. So it just needs a little bit more time <laughs> to relax before I can do the rest of this, but I have it run to this point through here. So I have two 90 degree elbows for the top corners of the steps, and then it's going down the front of the garden bed over here goes back around the garden through everything down and behind the laurels so i'll be tapping into it and bringing sprayers forward from that point that's the plan anyways and then i want to cut in and put in some of those pieces that i showed you before that i can put the quarter inch tubing to and run those to these miami planters that'll save me a lot of time not having to come over here with the hose and water those it takes a long time to water these because they're planted up very high in the container 
So uh, you have to do something with a lower water pressure or else the soil just flies out of the container. But if I have Mundrip, I'm not going to have to worry about that. Uh, I just turned the water onto this zone and realized that I already had the end of it capped off. So should I open up the end and then cap it off when it's done to, so that the water can come through? I don't even feel anything. Did the sprinklers turn on? Not a good sign. 20 seconds in, I feel like I should be feeling the water down here at this point. I wonder if it's spraying out somewhere else. No, there's water in there. I think that it's, you know, it's probably because I don't have this line open anywhere. So there's air pressure. That's what I'm guessing. Easy enough to figure out. Just do one of these. Yep. That's all it was. There's <laughs> just some air in there. I hope that didn't startle anybody. Hopefully it didn't startle y'all too much. Uh, I'm going to let this do its thing. I only have it set to run for two minutes right now. So you can see there are some thirsty plants over here. I haven't watered in like three days. So it's been hot and it's not very often you can take a break from watering. So I'm going to put this water to good use and then get back to it over there. This is so good. Some of the heads, actually all of them, are 180 degree and I wanted 360s. I ordered a pack of 180s and a pack of 360s. I didn't realize until I had put mostly all of them in that they were the 180s, but it'll be okay for now. But I'm going to, need to switch out like this one. I would rather that be a 360 degree spray. But like that's going to make such a difference. Everything over here is so bone dry. You know, I hand water and everything. So there's only so many hours in the day. I have another head put over here that's going to get this dry patch in the front of that spot of the garden bed. I have a 180 over here in the hibiscus. That's going to fan out and take care of everything over here. I had a 360 sprayer. I had a couple of them that I've pulled out from old drip. I put that one in here that I think that that's probably going to be too much water for this arb. The idea was that it would water both of these arbs and everything in this spot, but I'm probably going to have to make some adjustments with that. I think it might be too much. That line runs up behind everything, comes over here, swoops forward in front of that viburnum comes over here right into here and I put another 360 spray head on there that I had the pressure turned way down low on because it was just too much I was getting the neighbor's yard and I didn't need it coming over the wall but I think that'll be good because the sprinklers don't get anything right here and uh, I think it's overlapping enough with this 180 head that I put right here on the corner so that's getting everything in this spot and then here's what I really like I'm gonna talk about this but I'm gonna do it over there so these this little manifold doohickey this coupler, I love it. Have two quarter inch lines running forward to the pot right here. I don't think that's very noticeable. It doesn't bother me. I think it looks way better than the old drip, which I still need to pull up and having the lines running up from underneath everything. You know, I know that running the drip through the drainage holes in the bottom is always an option, but the drainage holes tend to clog more if you do that, especially if you have them set on top of well, anything that has some give to it. If these were on feet and on top of concrete or on top of a stone, Maybe that's something I would do, but that's not that much. That's not bugging me, and it means that I don't have to drag the hose over here and water anymore. I spend so much time watering on this end of the patio because none of the sprinklers hit any of the shrubbery or anything. So I have the 180 head right here that's going to take care of these hydrangeas. Another one in the corner that's going to help with the elephant ears and everything over there. And I've had to turn the pressure way down on these, like the, the what I don't remember the adjustable variable heads that are in here. Those are turned almost all the way down and look at how much pressure they have. Like there's water shooting right out of those. I didn't really finish talking about those. There's two in each one. I might move them more towards the sides because the back of the pot's not getting much water, but it's getting some water that's splashing over from the 180 head that's right behind it. I'm fairly confident that there should be more than enough water pressure to drag this line, not drag, but to feed it through <laughs> the rest of this wall down here and tap into it to water the plants that are on the perimeter of the garden and the ones that are up there on the hill garden. So I need one, two, three that I tap into for right here. I might tap in for the queen palm, probably not. I don't really mind hand watering that one. And then have it go the rest of the way down and I would need to put in, I think one, two, three of those spray heads to compensate for the area that the spring cord doesn't hit. There should be plenty of pressure to pull that off. Not doing that now because I need those 360 heads to come in. Those are the only two that I was able to find that were left over from the old system. And I think I need a buddy to help me feed this through because I was struggling up there trying to feed it through. So I need somebody who I can pass it through to. 
and use the staples, the landscape staples to help pin it down. So I want it to look nice and tidy. And when that's done, I can pull up all the old drip and the plastic lines that are all over the place over there. This is so good. If I, I don't know if I'm gonna do this, but if I can find beige tubing, they used to sell it. I haven't seen it in a long time, but if I can find beige quarter inch tubing, then I'll run a line, assuming there's enough water pressure over here to water these two planters too, because they've been a pain in the butt to water. These two uh, buccaneer or gossia palms, huge pain in the butt to water. It's because of the sand. So you can't just like blast them with water. You have to slowly, very slowly and tenderly water them so that the sand doesn't go all over the place. It takes a long time. So with this set up, I now am, that's gonna save me, I don't even know how much time watering, tons, tons of time watering, especially the stuff in the ground, the shrubs down there. I mean, watering those things took an eternity. It was easy too. Lots of supplies. I'll be using them all. This is just the beginning of it. There's so much more to do, but I wanted y'all to see the start to not finish, but the beginning of the process and a lot of the, just the thinking out loud with everything, because some of these things were things that I was new to, especially, you know, these connectors where you don't have a second fitting that goes over to tighten them down and they just push into them. That's so weird to me, but they're working. They're working fine and actually a lot faster to use because you don't have to t unscrew them and put one fitting on the hose and then put it together and then pull it back down and screw it all together. The only downside I would say that I noticed to these settings is that you really have to line them up just right or else the tubing bends you, It's because you can't see what you're doing. The other way, the more normal way that these things work, you can see what you're doing, but that piece, that white part that the half inch hose goes around, you, it's hard to tell when it's lining up and so you can't see it. So. Uh, I spent a lot of time accidentally bending parts of the end of the tubing, having to cut it and straighten it back out and make sure I have the right angle to get them in there. But overall, they worked fine. Yeah, like I said, I'll finish up the rest of that this weekend. I don't think it's going to be that exciting, but uh, there will be an update in next week's video. I'll be keeping everybody updated on how much I can get set up onto this with the right water pressure and everything, or how much I can get out of it, period, before I start to lose water pressure. The planters around the pool, I could, in theory run drip to this one and then the two hydrangeas down there run a line that comes out from underneath the alexander palm and run a line that comes out from the berm and then a line that would come out over the ground to this one this one right here would have to be tapped into zone seven and i don't have that set up yet so if there's enough water pressure maybe that's something i will do but i feel like that's low priority because just watering these four plants around the pool isn't that big of a deal it does take a very long time but i don't mind it it's the more detailed, like all the little stuff over there that the sprayers are going to hit. Now that's why we really want to take care of and to have the priority of the shrubs that are shriveling up down on the other end because they're shaded from the maples. So when it rains, they don't get a lot and uh, the sprinkler heads just weren't hitting them. So that end of the berm, that's going to make a huge difference. I'm so happy that this worked out. I still have so many, so many of these 180s, but that's good because I think that I'm going to want some of those probably over here. Down here, like I said, I think I want the three. Well, let me get to all that. When it's time to get to it, I don't even have the parts yet. I think the next thing to do is to finish up the other thing I started and get this green paneling done. There's no way I'm finishing this without some citronella mosquitoes and gnats. Horrible right now. So I've been looking at this and thinking maybe I need to move everything down a row. I need some space so I can get back here. That's going to help. If I just take this piece, you see that up there, the very top piece? If I go ahead and lower that down so the top of it is flush with, well, the top of that piece of siding, then it won't stick up much, if at all, above the window. But that would also mean I have to shift everything else down. Although shifting everything else down might solve this problem right here. Because I really don't want to use the alien tape. I have it, I can show it to you if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's this like rubbery elastic they call it reusable tape and it does work well i have had it rip paint off of walls before and i just i don't know one the sun is going to beat on this so who knows if this would even work and two what if it does work really well and then it rips the paint off of the siding yeah so that's where i'm at i think i'm going to need a ladder i'm gonna go find a ladder and see if what can come up with for this situation here hey alien tape for the win I just cut off little pieces, wasn't even using very much. Pull it kind of tight, stretch it out, and stuff sticking right to it. I don't know if that's gonna hold up in the weather. We'll have to see, hello, that's my reflection. How y'all doing? You can see where there's some spots where things are overlapping. 
from what I've read about this stuff, sometimes you just have to give it some time and it'll sort of fluff out when it's exposed to the elements. That's what I'm hoping is going to happen here. I had a scrap piece, so I went ahead instead of moving things around, well I started to move things around and said that was a terrible idea because I have to redo everything I've already done. I went and just put the scrap piece over the window and I think that that's going to work out fine. It's a, for, nobody's going to be standing this close to it, I'm standing right where the cabinet storage thing goes. So it's not something that's going to be noticeable if it, you know, you see all these lines and things where I don't know, it's on camera, it's not that noticeable. I feel like I can see it because I'm seeing dimension better than y'all can see through the camera lens. But again, I'm thinking that that won't be all that noticeable moving forward because we always be standing at least like at least this far probably. Yeah, that's how far back I'll always be standing. So uh, I got to get it right though before I put all this stuff back. And I bet it's going to change too with the elements and everything that wouldn't surprise me they make sure i hold on to these little scrap pieces because need those to fill in the gaps i turned this fan i know it isn't pretty but i really love this thing i'm over here on this ladder what at least 15 feet something like that 15 feet away there's a strong breeze from it it's not that hot out i just i'm using it to blow the mosquitoes off me because the mosquitoes are really bad right now Ideally, I'll be able to just cut this in half and then put this piece above it. Getting around that light, that's going to be a pain in the butt. And still have one panel to spare. I'm glad that I measured because the options were a 12-pack or a 24-pack, and the 24-pack definitely wouldn't overkill. What do we think? I really like it. I can, all right, I see some spots where I might need to make some touch-ups, like up here in this corner. With the alien tape, I went in and just used little squares of it to pin back spots that didn't want to stay in place. Uh, otherwise, I just used those sighting clips, hung them right up. That's why I didn't really film the process, because I don't really need to. And see, when you get close, you can sort of see the seams in a few spots, but I think if I go through and just sort of scrunch those together, then it probably won't be very noticeable. I don't think, yeah, see, there's that spot up there. So that flopped down, there's a little piece right there I need to push back in. But otherwise, I don't know, I like it better than looking at the siding. I feel like it sort of finishes off that space. And it creates a more inviting sort of uh, like a beacon. Draw you over there into the nice little seating area with the lush wall that does. It reminds me of the Kentucky Derby. I don't know why. Churchill Downs or a step and repeat at a wedding or something like that. But I, like I said, I like it better than looking at siding. We'll see how long it lasts. This stuff was incredibly cheap, so uh, I don't I don't know. It was also it was on clearance, so maybe it's a good quality, and I just got a good deal on it. I think the normal pricing for it was like one fifty or one eighty to two forty uh, for the twenty four pack. That is, and I, the twelve pack I think was normally like one hundred two to one thirty somewhere. I, there were lots of variations depending on what sizes you were getting with this stuff. I would link it, but I don't know if I like it, and I don't want people to buy something if it's total garbage, so just, I don't know, stay tuned. Be getting updates on it, see if it bleaches out, or when it bleaches out, and how long that's going to take. In the winter, I think that I should probably take it down. I probably won't, but I've, that's probably what I should do, right? <sighs> yeah, this is good. I, it's, I, I do like it. I do like it. It's just one of those things where I'm just gonna have to get rid of the fact that it's plastic plants. That's fine. That's the whole point of it, is they have a green wall where you can't just put real plants on the wall. And like I said, multiple times, I think that that looks much better than just the siding. It draws your eye to the area, makes it seem more like its own little room. I do like it. I also realized while I was sitting here thinking about the drip, is that once I have this line run down this wall, I could tap into it right here do a 90 degree so it comes down to the ground, run it over here, do another 90 degree, run it up over this wall, another 90 degree to run it down behind this wall and around. And if there's enough, I would obviously, right, only if there's enough water pressure, would be able to tap in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven more lines. Everything over here would be watered automatically. That would be so nice. I'm going to be doing this to, like, whatever's the priority, which is getting sprayers over here on this hill where there's no water. And then, assuming there's enough pressure, like I said, experimenting with running lines out to pottery 
like these pots over here and then maybe this area over here. And if there's not enough water pressure for it, that's okay because there's a whole other zone of irrigation over here on this side of the yard that I can tap into somewhere, I'm sure. I don't know where, but I know that there's got to be a spot somewhere in the ground over here that I could tap into it and set up a whole other irrigation for everything over here. So like from the queen palms and down and over and then maybe into the shade garden that I'm going to try and get going on next week. That would be awesome. Mostly because I don't have to mess with those stupid timers anymore. Those timers, you know, the ones you put the batteries in and you set them up. Most of them are made by Orbit or Melnor, Raindrop, Drip Drop. I don't remember. There are lots of brands of them out there. I just don't get longevity out of them. It's a pain setting them up. This way, everything is, this is much more permanent. It's a drip, so you have to keep an eye on it. I'm sure I'll have to change out heads and watch out for cracks in the line and all of those things. It's normal with a drip. But having everything run behind everything neatly and tidy and uh, minimizing the number of the little things like these, not having too many of these, mostly the big spikes for the micro irrigation, that's much more permanent and it's not in your face. It's just hidden and behind the scenes and I'll have to just push a button on my phone and everything's watered. It's such a relief. I feel so good to have, it's not done, but to have at least that part of it done and it was so easy i know i didn't film a ton of it that's just because i have covered drip so much on the channel i will put in the end cards that will be coming up here in just a minute some drip videos if you want to know drip irrigation stuff and uh, also didn't film a ton because some of these things are things i haven't used before and i'm new to and i'd like to have some time with them before giving an opinion or saying hey you should do this because i don't really know right with some of these fittings the uh, ones that the couplers that come out that attach to the quarter inch line I, I don't know i can't give a full opinion on them other than i really like them but is it easier than just popping into your regular line not necessarily but i think it's going to be more reliable because those lines tend to pop out and you have to change them out a lot at least i do that's always been a thing for me over here anyways that we've done enough enough of little things oh toby update he oh he went inside went to the vet he's fine they did an ekg and blood work and all sorts of things he's looking good and uh, they even finally agreed to have a specialist come out a surgeon that specializes in stuff with tumor removal he's had a lipoma on him for years and multiple vets are like eh we don't want to remove it but it's gotten big enough and his heart's still good enough that I went in and said, I think it's time to let's just do this because the options are, okay, we leave this here. It keeps getting bigger and it's going to cause complications with his digestion, his urination because it's right around his urethra. Uh, he seems uncomfortable. He's having trouble getting up and down the stairs and he's 13 almost. No, he is 13. He has turned 13. So it's not to be unexpected, but his heart's still in good shape and uh, he still like he jumps up on the loungers down there like you saw so he's capable of it imagine how much more capable he'd be if that lipoma were removed so it it was just a lot of back and forth over the last few years with multiple vets and they finally said yeah this is getting big and his heart's still good let's go ahead and take it off so toby's going into surgery in a couple of weeks and i'm very excited for him uh, it's you know not when they get old it's so complicated that's why if my tone was kind of down in the beginning of the video that was just because I was worried about Toby because of his age and he had been mopey and you know how that goes he's had old dogs like you start to see the signs you get worried about him and uh, I think that this will be really good for his health and he's feeling much better now one of the reasons he may have been mopey is because he managed to get into uh, one of the bedrooms where there's an automatic cat dispenser, one of those big tall ones with the bowl underneath it, cat food. It doesn't dispense cats, it dispenses cat food. This is the night before when y'all saw him in the beginning of the video, seeming kind of mopey. And he ate all the food. It was like two and a half pounds of cat food. So that also, that may have had something to do with it. But like I said, when they're old, you, just, you worry. So that's what was going on there. I think he's going to be fine, hopefully, but you know, he's 13. We will see. Fingers crossed for Toby. I think that the surgery's the way to go. Cause like I said, the options are I'll leave it there and it causes complications and you have to put him down or remove it and he's going to have a few months of recovery. The first 10 days is supposed to be the worst and after that it's just, you know, normal like keep the incision clean and dry sort of stuff. Uh, so surprisingly, the recovery doesn't seem that bad. But he's old in his heart and everything. The EKG was good. The family decision was let's just go ahead and do it and get that thing off of him. May as well have been trying to get a vet to say that they would remove it for years. So now that someone's said, yeah, let's get this off of him, may as well 
do it. Still rambling. Okay. Hey, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> I'm beat. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope the weather's perked up for a lot of y'all. It has been so weird. We just had temperature whiplash here. It was 112 index a few days ago, and then I've been wearing a hoodie ever since. It's like 72 right now. So freaking weird, but I'm not going to complain about it. Good time to get stuff like this done outside. Yeah, hope uh, y'all are doing well. Having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. I need to move this. It's starting to lean towards the sun. Next week. We'll do other things next week. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. Yeah, I missed one of the ugly colladiums. It's over here. That's all right. It can stay. I don't really, it's not in my face like the other ones were. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. I forgot to point out, look at the gingers. They just exploded out of nowhere, just blooming like crazy. Doesn't that look so pretty? so pretty. I love those gingers. Bye! Bye!